thanks for yeah. coming in. Um, we're here today to talk mostly about infrastructure sure. issues, uh, State Street Bridge, Second Street. Um, so maybe you want to just lay things out for the people at home who are watching it on where the city is at. Just sure. Okay. Yes, we're really excited to be talking about transportation because in, in many respects it uh, represents a, a new phase for the city, an opportunity to be forward-looking and strategic in our planning. Uh, when I took office, we were in the midst of a financial crisis. It wasn't clear that we'd have the resources to do any major transportation projects. And uh, as you know, we've, uh, we've slowly um, uh, brought ourselves back, and we, we recently uh, received a, a sort of five-year taxing extension, which is going to allow us to have the stability to, to really do this properly. A little context, uh, we're going to talk about something called uh, Vision Zero, which is a, uh, a plan not unique to Harrisburg. It's really sort of a best practice uh, throughout, um, throughout the world uh, and uh, also throughout the United States. Uh, it is a, an effort to eliminate uh, traffic-related fatalities. And um, uh, I am pleased to say that uh, uh, Penn Live was one of the driving forces behind uh, this when you editorialize the city really ought to um, uh, uh, look at this, uh, look at the concept of Vision Zero. Now we had already heard of Vision Zero, we'd been to uh, several conferences, Wayne had been in contact with other uh, municipalities about what they were doing, but we decided to embrace it full force and we um, have a steering committee and uh, we're in the midst of developing an action plan which will be released in the spring. And uh, it is a commitment, it's a 10 year commitment uh, over the course of the city to really um, uh, frame all of our transportation related decisions fundamentally uh, around the concept of safety. Safety for everyone, for pedestrians and bicyclists as well as, uh, as, well as motorists and people that uh, ride the bus. Also a little historical context, uh, maybe most people know it, but uh, uh, it's, uh, it's, it, I think it bears repeating that during the day, the, the population of Harrisburg doubles. More people commute into the city than actually live in the city. We have a population of about 50,000, and more than 50,000 people drive in. And as a sort of corollary stat to that, which is also interesting, um, of the people in the city that work, the, major the overwhelming majority of people that uh, uh, live in the city um, uh, commute to jobs outside of the city. So you also have a reversal of traffic going the other way. Um, uh, something like a, a three to one relationship of people that live in the city that work outside of it rather than inside it. Um, also, uh, historically, the city's population began a, a gradual decline about 1950, and that uh, coincides with, uh, with uh, rather dramatically with the Harvey Taylor Bridge, the development of uh, Forster Street, and uh, the conversion of Second Street to One Way, as well as the um, uh, expansion of the Capitol Complex, the demolition of a number of residential neighborhoods. Uh, and and uh, at the time, the thought was, uh, let's make Harrisburg uh, focus on getting people in and out of Harrisburg as quickly as possible. Um, that was even embraced by city leaders at the time. And uh, what we've seen is that uh, slowly but surely, since 1950, the city's population has decreased really to the low point of 2010, which also corresponded with our low point in terms of financial crisis. And if we can put it in a financial context too, I think it's important. You know, you have um, you have a lot of commuters that I think are uh, uneasy with uh, with paying a local services tax. They um, don't want to pay that type of a uh, you know sort of an impact fee for for uh, working or driving in the city. And I would say to them that uh, part of the part of the long term benefit of this zero strategy is that it will allow us to um, increase our population. You make Harrisburg more attractive uh, for people to want to live in the city, uh, and slowly but surely, we will be able to be more reliant uh, on our own population base and less reliant um, on, uh, uh, on commuters uh, for things like the local services tax. So, um, and, and part of what the legislature did when they uh, enacted this new act for Harrisburg was that they said, well, you can have it for five years, um, but uh, you need to put policies in place that are going to do things like increase your population, increase your own tax base. So we're seeing, uh, I think, statewide and uh, nationally a desire for people to want to move back into urban settings. Um, in Harrisburg, we're trying to capitalize on that, and we, we're seeing it. We're seeing our population slowly begin to grow. 
Um, we see that in our, our revenues. But one of the ways you do that is you make uh, your streets uh, more, more, more easily accessible, you make it safer for people to walk to work or bike to work, and you develop a strategy which, um, which really focuses on, um, on the quality of life in an urban, urban setting. So when you combine that sort of long-term, I would say, financial mandate with um, the, the public safety component of Vision Zero, you, you get to where we are now. And, uh, and, and returning then to, to public safety, we have at least one street in Harrisburg which is by some standards considered uh, the, the least safe street in, 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 in the country. Um, and that is State Street, which is a major boulevard that is uh, uh, you know, running through a residential uh, part of the city. And we have other, um, other uh, aspects of, uh, of the Harrisburg Transportation Network which are also unsafe. And one of the things that Vision Zero has called for, it has called for us to do data collection. And I want to just start by saying everybody should go visit the um, uh, website, which is visionzerohbg.org. And on the... Write it out? Yes, or? write it out. Yes, write it out. Uh, visionzerohbg.org. Uh, uh, um, and on that, you can not only uh, see a list of upcoming transportation projects, which I'm happy to talk about, and we can go into some detail on, and they're, they're even more than is what is on the website. I was just checking. Uh, but you can also see what's called our, our map of our high injury network. And uh, this is sort of one of the cornerstones of uh, uh, Vision Zero, which is you've got to get the data first, you've got to plot the data, and it shows bicycle related crashes, motorcycle related crashes, pedestrian related um, incidents, it, it, it color coordinates them depending on severity, and it's a very useful map to see. And it really shows us where we need to focus. We chose State Street as the initial rapid response or focus area because of the alarming uh, number of deaths in a short span of time, but we are certainly looking at the entire network, and if you want a sense of where the city's focused, uh, look, bringing up that map on the Vision Zero HBG website would be helpful. So that's just a general introduction, and happy to talk about uh, any aspects of the projects or whatever you'd like. Yeah. Would you mind going through some of them? I mean, we've got, uh, sure. we, we know about State Street and Second Street, but I'm looking at the list right now. There's the Division Street Bridge study, sure. Moore Square. There are, there are a lot. So, um, so, so, so we'll, let's go through some of them. Uh, I'll just say briefly on State Street, the concept is a road diet with uh, sheltered bike lanes. Basically, you take, uh, you, 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 you take the parking, you move it into the street, you allow the bike lanes to run between the parking and uh, the sidewalk, um, and you would cut down, uh, you cut down a lane in each direction. Um, our findings show that while that will increase commuter times a bit, uh, it should lead to a much safer uh, 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 area, and it may even encourage people. We're looking at uh, um, you know the optimization of, of cat and the bus stops may encourage other forms of of transportation. So that's one that you know of. Um, uh, we are in the stages of planning for a similar uh, transformation of Second Street in which uh, Second Street would turn to two-way traffic um, and, uh, and then also improvements on one of the most dangerous intersections in the whole city, if not the most, which is the, the uh, right after you get over the Harvey Taylor Bridge and you're in the city, it's Front and Forster. Uh, it has the highest number of uh, crashes uh, anywhere. We're looking at, uh, and, and all, I should note right off the bat, now we're, uh, sec while Second Street is a city road, Forrester Street and State Street are state roads, and they require us working with PennDOT, but we've had very good conversations with PennDOT, and frankly, we need to focus on this stuff now more than ever, given the whole 83 widening plan, which is not our project, but which is a PennDOT project, which which proposes and actually takes into its um, uh, you know, fundamental framework uh, a belief that they're going to be bringing tens of thousands of more cars into the city uh, over the next uh, decade or, or 20 years or however long they plan out for. And uh, so you know, we have to look, look forward here in 10 years and, and imagine uh, what, the, what the impact of additional vehicle traffic would be. I'm concerned, uh, are you about that 83 wide? Because yeah. up to 12 lanes? It sounds like... We are we're very concerned uh, because in part because 
you know, if you build it, they will come. Uh, and uh, it, 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 it does, in my opinion, and I don't think we've talked enough about this, it just does not encourage um, uh, mass transit or, or any other uh, alternative to uh, the vehicle. There's not even an HOV lane or, or anything in this plan. So, um, uh, you know, boy, we'd certainly love to see uh, um, rail or, uh, the, you know, the adaptive reuse of the old cat bridge and, and something that would, would encourage people to, to, to get to work in the city other than, uh, other than driving. Um, for a number of different reasons, uh, uh, not the least of which is that our grid, our street grid, our high injury network, that's not going to change. And there's, there's a limit to what we can do. We can't, uh, we can't really uh, uh, um, do much more to, to handle this increased traffic. So uh, whereas if people were to carpool, take the bus, use other uh, modes of uh, transit, it would, be, it would be a better plan. So, it, it, and they're spending billions with a B of dollars on this plan. It, you would think that they, if they invested in mass transit, it might, uh, it might be a better plan. But there are aspects of it that we like. I think the, um, the fact that there would be a new exit on Cameron Street could be uh, good for, um, in, in some ways, for relieving congestion and traffic. But in general, um, we think it's, uh, it's o way over building um, and, uh, and creating um, uh, a sort of ripple effect of, uh, of issues. But back to, back to the city, I, I do mention that because, you know, you've got to think about having 20,000 more cars in the city. Um, then, uh, uh, you know, Forster Street, we go, uh, we're also looking at 7th Street in, in, in the city. We're going to have two roundabouts in Harrisburg uh, next year. So, um, and, and that's just the beginning. Uh, we've got others planned that we can talk about. But you're going to have one at uh, the, the, the new federal courthouse site which is under construction as we speak. And uh, it's, uh, you know, very, very much happening, if anyone is um, not convinced, uh, fully funded. Uh, and that will be at, at, at Riley and 7th. We are, we are also planning uh, a smaller roundabout in Mulder Square, which is the area of Allison Hill right over the Mulberry Street Bridge, where there's been a lot of activity um, lately, a lot of construction. Uh, we are looking at uh, future roundabouts at certain critical intersections, also for pedestrian safety uh, near Derry and Berry Hill and Brookwood around the schools uh, there, um, which have resulted in accidents. And there are lots of advantages to, to roundabouts, and people may be um, uh, anxious about them in certain ways. But uh, uh, one thing that they do, and a lot of what you see in many of our projects in the city, including on Third Street is if you can uh, decrease the distance that uh, pedestrians have to walk to cross the street, um, it's not only safer for uh, pedestrians, but many times uh, it can improve traffic flow and speed speed things up because a lot of times you're just waiting at lights for pedestrians to cross extremely long distances. At, at the Forster and Front Street uh, intersection, we're talking about possibly eliminating the slip lanes that uh, people use to sort of uh, get on the bridge or off the bridge. Mm -hmm. You do that, you cut down on, um, you know, uh, large amounts of uh, feet that people uh, have to cross. The result will be that the light cycles will change and uh, people will have to wait at lights for less amount of time. So there, there's, there's a trade-off here that, that benefits um, people in automobiles as well as pedestrians. And that, it's a similar thing for, uh, for roundabouts over um, uh, over yeah. traffic signals. Yeah. Well, that's a. Do you, maybe that might that might be a question for Wayne. Uh, uh, do you know how um, uh, how common it is now currently in urban planning? So uh, in Pennsylvania. Yeah. It's. Uh, I mean, it's the, the safety benefits of roundabout are what attracts everyone to them. I mean, your collisions are not the uh, side impact collisions. They're more of the, you know, side glance and, and the safety benefits are well known and documented. Um, as far as urban roundabouts, um, I mean, let's face it, Europe and Australia, um, that they have them everywhere, including the urban areas. Uh, Towns of Maryland roundabout um, is is an example of an urban roundabout. Um, so do you know what town these people get down there and check it out? Ta towns in... Yeah. Oh, Chasm. Okay. Yeah. Got it. Yeah. Um, 
our vision yeah, zero uh, our vision zero consultants maybe you should talk about the so, folks so, that are playing yeah right so our, our lead consultant on on the roundabout projects and also the vision zero project is Walsh Montgomery um, and their their main office is in Maryland Maryland's been very progressive with roundabouts for in, in the entire country uh, the, the, the DOT there and so they have you know hundreds of roundabout designs under their <laughs> under their belts if you will uh, they are also a PennDOT, uh, I think PennDOT District 8 has two roundabout review consultants. Uh, they're one of the roundabout review consultants on that PennDOT uh, open-end agreement. And then Kittleson, who is um, on board with uh, doing the traffic study, is also is, is the other roundabout expert, I think, in, in, in this, in our country. Um, so, you know, we do have the leading, leading experts in the United States on, on <coughs> roundabout designs. And that's important because uh, a poorly de designed roundabout could eliminate some of the safety benefits. Um, you know, there's offsets and things that have to be carefully considered, especially at the 7th and Riley intersection where you have two lanes, a two lane roundabout, and you can have vehicle overlap and things like that. So it's important that those be, you know, laid out properly. Yeah, so uh, we're, we're looking at best practice. Part of what Vision Zero encourages you to do is to look at best practices nationally and internationally, and uh, we're incorporating those into our, our plans. We've got great support um, from GSA and the federal courthouse folks from FIA, which is the largest employer near the roundabout and has a real concern. Uh, most of their employees park uh, uh, on the other side of 7th Street and then have to cross 7th Street. So if we can make it easier, we're also doing elevated crosswalk and some other uh, things. We're putting in um, uh, two-way cycle track there for uh, encouraging potential bike use on 7th Street and then connecting that in other ways. There are there are many other uh, transportation projects. Basically, the city's infrastructure was neglected for a long period of time. There was basically no uh, infrastructure projects for a period of years there in the midst of the financial crisis. And um, a lot of what we are talking about is, uh, is partially grant funded, both through PennDOT and through Impact Harrisburg, which was the group set up to sort of be custodians of economic development money. Um, all of it requires city, city funding in the match, and when we have our budget and produce the budget documents, you see the city's portions there, but you don't always see the, the full contributions by, by others. Another, another one that I'm really excited about that is going to be done by the end of next summer is the, uh, the complete replacement of the lower river walk in Riverfront Park. Uh, which uh, is going to extend now all the way from uh, Shypoke, where it had been replaced partly, but now continuing all the way up to um, the, the end of the walk there at McClay Street. That's important because that's uh, another means of, uh, for bicyclists and, and, and others to, uh, to, and that's part of the green belt. We've seen a number of improvements with the green belt. Uh, you, your uh, readers and viewers may have noticed uh, new crosswalk markings at various intersections, including like Vaughn and, and Front. Um, Wayne told me today that you know we, we've been doing a lot of traffic counting, and we have uh, we actually have pretty exciting technology which allows us to to do this. When we replaced uh, upgraded our streetlights uh, a number of uh, years ago, we invested in a sort of communication system which allows you to add on other things and one thing that we've added on to this network is the ability to count cars and uh, judge speeds and other types of things so that we're going to have more and more data that we can use but um, you know I can tell you that we've at, at, at some of our intersections we have a thousand cars an hour coming into the city at various times and that uh, and that would be Front Street and that's uh, uh, so it was a thousand per lane Thousand per lane Correct. per hour. Okay, sorry. Even 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 more than that. Yes. Was that project done up Front Street, where the big looked like big sewer lines were uh -huh. across the grass? It seemed like that was going on forever. We had more calls about that. Yeah, I I think I've had more questions about that project yeah. than any other project. So that's a Capital Region Water project. It is not done. Uh, it was supposed to be done uh, when it was uh, uh, pitched to the city. It, it is a um, the sewer interceptor, basically our sewer system feeds into pipes that either run under the park or run under the, 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 the steps of the, of, of the river walk, depending on what part of the city you are. This is the part that's post the river walk, so it's, right. the, the, the sewer is collecting underneath the park. 
and they were constructing a above ground piping system to divert uh, the, uh, uh, the 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 sewer discharge in order to make repairs uh, underground. Very complicated. I don't know if you have any more of an update than that, but uh, it, it's uh, it, it's just another example of finally addressing a hundred year old infrastructure and uh, realizing that uh, once you you start digging there's there's more and more work we have a similar project on market street that is closed market street for a very long period of time that's one where they're actually able to dig in the street and replace the piping this one is more complicated because they can't replace the whole thing so they they tried to do a diversion so yeah so, I mean, it'll it'll continue through the winter, which is okay. It's it's there are I think there is some work that, um, and and I'm just going based on my last discussions with their their team. Um, there there is some accessory work that's above ground that that'll you know happen next year in the summer by necessity, um, especially with the park uh, uh, reseeding and things like that. Um, but again, it's they're they're behind schedule, and I don't know that they're gaining time with the winter months. I think they're probably losing time as we go. So we'll continue to monitor the project and work with CRW to uh, hopefully not interfere with any you know programmed events and things like that 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 are scheduled for the park next year. But it, but the mayor's right. It's a bypass pump, is what everyone sees. The actual work, the rehabilitation work, is being done in inner pipe, uh, which is brick. Um, underneath that river wall we certainly want to get it done uh in you know in time for good use of the green belt in the spring and the summer and so at least uh, the winter is a better time to shut things down can you talk if you would about the second street mm -hmm. conversion what the rationale was for an essay for that a and then what the sort of timeline looks like for that so we we have um we have done uh, preliminary studies, traffic counts, and a variety of other things, and, and I, I won't go through the long context. We did present on this, and um, you can view the whole meeting on the city's website, or on Vision Zero, I think you can link to the, uh, to the, to the meeting. Yeah, and the PowerPoint. So, um, visionzerohbg.com, but uh, it, it uh, org. It has been uh, talked about for, um, you know, 60 years now. And um, there's a lot to, and, 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 and we're now focused on, uh, when, when I first took office, we met with PennDOT, we talked about what it would take to do, we um, did the traffic counts, the studies, and, and everything that would preliminarily show us, could this be done? And we are very satisfied that not only can it be done, but that it will actually improve traffic flow in the city. Um, for, for everyone. You actually uh, will see that it will, it will help um, all sorts of other ancillary intersections uh, uh, more easily uh, deal with traffic loads. An example of one being, um, which I'm very familiar with because I take every morning, uh, uh, Division in Front Street uh, is, is very hard to turn on in the morning. There isn't a, a, a light there. It backs up. Well, if you have a two-way Second Street, you know, uh, people can can go down Second Street rather than having to make that turn, and it shows that that could be a, a big improvement. Um, just one example. So um, we we have the go-ahead from PennDOT, and we also have the funding in place uh, to to make it happen because that was uh, um, that that was part of both Impact Harrisburg and uh, uh, PennDOT proposals. So that's that's there. So the, we intend to make uh, Second Street two-way. Uh, it, it would go two-way in 2020, um, but what we uh, have not completed is the design phase, and we had a preliminary meeting to sort of gather um, feedback and concepts. We're going to have another meeting in the spring, and then we will uh, engage over the course of 2019 in a full-fledged design. And uh, while we anticipate Second Street going uh, two-way in 2020, the improvements may continue beyond that uh, as we might phase them in over time because there's a lot of different improvements. One, one of the things that we wanted to do before uh, Second Street was um, uh, finish Third Street, which will happen next year, do Seventh Street, remove all that parking in the middle, of the you know, make set Seventh Street flow better, um, which will happen next year and into the following year. Um, and um, so that uh, those projects can be completed in advance. And then afterwards, there may be additional projects. One project that we haven't, we don't have the funding for yet, uh, and we haven't mentioned, but which is 
important to the overall vision and something uh, that we really would like to see at some point is a bridge over um, uh, the, the train tracks at Division Street, which would connect the city to Hack and Wildwood, as well as um, provide another means of uh, uh, entrance and exit, uh, uh, you know, to um, relieve some of the congestion on Cameron Street. The 83 um, connection in South Harrisburg uh, will also, I think, uh, help with that as well. But Cameron Street is a problematic, um, problematic road that is is uh, also, you know, uh, you know, at capacity. Let's put it that way. So, um, so we are asking uh, people to help involved in uh, get involved in what what they want to see for um, Second Street. We're not, uh, and we've conducted a survey. We've had how many responses? Like over five hundred. Yeah, we we got we've got hundreds of responses in the short immediate time. We've had over five hundred so far. That you can also um, uh, uh, you know find. We'll share those results, and they're they're competing interests. I think some people would like. Perhaps not surprisingly, to see more parking as part of a redesign, um, uh, maybe angled parking instead of um, uh, the the parking which currently exists. Some would like to see, um, you know, a, a tree-lined median to turn it into a boulevard. Uh, some would uh, would like to, um, you know, to, to see other things. And we've we've been getting uh, a variety of feedback, but we think it will be good for everyone, including commuters. And uh, it is part of uh, the vision of the next several years. Can you say um, yep. the bulk of the does it fall into any particular category? Like, is there a hint, like, you're seeing more support for more parking or more support for bike lanes versus the other different options you're considering? Um, you know, I haven't dove into the into the data um, to that degree, but it, it was pretty divided. The, the, like after divided? the first day, I think we had 200 responses in the first day or something. Um, it was, it was, you know, it was, it was generally equally divided, but um, there, we're looking at... Um, you know, to make that decision, if it ends up being a, a three-way split, if you will, um, other mechanisms to perhaps, you know, make the call. Um, so there will be some sort of maintenance consideration, whether one's easier to maintain um, than another, costly rather. Um, but safety is going to, we're trying to look at a way to uh, um, determine which way is safety, safer. And, and that determination would have to be made um, through um, a federal uh, crash reduction factor analysis and so I'm not really sure a methodology currently exists to do that but uh, the team that that we're working with has uh, developed some F some of the FHA w FHWA Federal Highway uh, Administration's um, guides on that crash reduction factors and things and so we're trying to determine if that makes a difference right um, so we will we will crunch all that data yeah. and evaluate it and I haven't I haven't seen um, all the survey res, uh, results but I I will say in um, in terms of conversations I've had and even in the public meeting uh, while uh, I think there was overwhelming support for um, the two-way concept there was a, a lot of disagreement over exactly what it should look like and and that's probably normal for uh, for for many different things but you, you have a very adamant uh, biking community that wants to see a bike lane and um, that was very well represented and well articulated but you have um, you have others that want to see um, you know maybe uh, you know uh, uh, more parking or another uh, uh, suggestion was uh, designated areas for um, for uh, deliveries and drop-offs and that sort of thing which uh, not necessarily all of which can be accommodated but if you are uh, eliminating at least a, a lane, you've got the possibility to do to do something, and, and as well as like you know a boulevard strip or something along those lines. Yep. Would it require any parking acquisition at all for the first street? Not not the not what we're currently contemplating for Second Street. Uh, I know that. Uh, I, correct. Yeah, it's I, unlikely. There is a potential. If <coughs> I mean, even a couple inches. So we have in the. The idea of uh, roundabouts are you have big nodes and small roads. Right. And so if Second Street is a small road, we, w we wouldn't have to acquire anything on the area. But the node comes in. So if there was any, when we do what's called an intersection control evaluation of some of the intersections that are currently um, signaled, particularly Riley, Verbeck, Kelker, these intersections, right. th a decision has to be made whether we completely rebuild the traffic signal that's there to allow it function both ways 
do we stop control it? Like Kelker could probably be a two-way stop, right. um, but you know Riley perhaps a mini roundabout would function better, safer than a rebuilt traffic signal. Sure. When we do that intersection control evaluation, if that if that comes up, the first thing we're going to look at is is right away, and can we get the right away without? We're, we don't want to take any structures. That's that's out of the question. Right um, do we have to get you know an easement so a property line instead of being squared up would be you know cut the corner, so to speak? That's something that we right. have not yet looked at. We have to do the intersection control evaluation first. First, we have to get the public input, mm -hmm. get the the numbers we talked about on you know crash reduction factors and things on the corridor itself, depending on the you know the three different scenarios right. what to do with the cartway then we'll dive into the um, intersection and as as you suggested we might even take out signals and uh, uh, you know and, and replace them with stop signs there, there's there's a lot of possibilities I will say for the uh, roundabout that we are considering on uh, 7th and Riley that uh, there will there is property um, uh, being cooperatively taken from the various entities and uh, everyone's very supportive of that yeah well it's a uh, uh, federal uh, federal and and some private land but I think everyone recognizes that it's a benefit to um, to their properties to have that there um, and <coughs> were we to do I mentioned uh, the dairy Street by the schools the school district's been very cooperative and willing to um, you know uh, seed land potentially for that uh, roundabout so that that is where you would get into those issues but we're not looking to do anything that would be um, controversial you don't have to do it this is just a potential option we have, yeah, we, we, we are looking. we haven't planned a roundabout yet for um, for second Street two-way um, talk about the safety issues and the traffic pattern issues mm -hmm. but how about the social issues of all this? I mean, any thoughts about what this would mean to the city and how this would reshape the city? And can you get into that at all? Yeah, I, I, I really, um, I, I truly feel that, um, uh, especially Second Street and State Street are very, are very similar uh, because they, uh, they are residential in nature, and yet they're sort of cut through by a super, super highway. And as a result, um, it is very difficult to have that. Um, sense of uh, community or, or connection. Uh, I know people that feel completely cut off from the river, for instance, which is sort of the lifeblood of the city in many respects for whole periods of uh, time, times of day. And um, uh, I know on, on straight State Street, people that, uh, you know, don't know their neighbors on the other side of the street because uh, they um, never uh, feel safe crossing. Uh, so it is... Uh, I, I believe that, and it's not just it's not just those examples, but I think uh, what we're doing on Third Street with uh, with the green infrastructure and the bump outs and creating a uh, I th you're creating a, a a a corridor where people and pedestrians can can feel safe and and engage in um, commerce and other activities. And the bike network is a very important part of this as well because more and more people. Um, see the appeal of not having a car, uh, I'm, and this may be shocking to some watching this at home or, or, or reading this, but it, 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 there are people that don't want to have to drive everywhere. And uh, in the city right now, um, uh, with, uh, with things like uh, provisions, the new uh, grocery store downtown, the new Radish and Rye that's planned for Midtown, uh, you're, you've gotten to the point where you, can, uh, you don't actually uh, need to go long distances to get your, your basic supplies. And, um, and, that, and, and you're going to see more of that as the city continues to develop. So I think uh, we're trying to create uh, these corridors as uh, safe spaces, uh, and and not as um, uh, you know sort of uh, difficult barriers from from one, one area to the next. Yeah. Yeah. So I, uh -huh. I stepped off into this. I'll get to Mike Albert, the other Mr. Mike's. Okay. Words, fantastic guy. He's yeah. Closing yes, after, I after saw. Weeks. Yeah. Um, and I think we spent probably 15, 20 minutes talking about the absence of any sort of retail presence um, in the city. Yes, you have a sort of sporadically, but I don't think of like, I can't think of like a sort of a concentrated shopping district like you have, say, in Lancaster or in York City around Market Street and in George Street there. I mean, would that, would, would these corridors sort of lend themselves to that? And how do you see that fitting in? Oh, yeah, absolutely. And so let's take that. So that's, uh, that's the Soma area, that stretch. I think if people don't yeah. know where it is, we're talking about, um, uh, you know, near 
Cafe Soul, and uh, uh, it and that's one of the areas where uh, where they put they put new lighting across the street to try and create the connectivity. We have shut the street down for, and they want to do more of that in the future for um, uh, you know evening festivals and activities. And you actually do have the um, the physical structures for retail, and Harristown has been uh, uh, actively acquiring a lot of those structures and renovating them and making them available for for retail. So I, I noticed that uh, the, Mike's own uh, spot has undergone a bit of a facelift. There, it looks very nice, and right next to it is uh, is an empty uh, storefront for rent. And and there's a couple up the street. Just had uh, two retailers, urban retailers, move into that block in uh, uh, Stash and the Midtown Dandy. Um, and uh, what you're hoping for is a critical mass that you can you you'll you'll get others to want to be part of that. You 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 also see this um, in other in other parts of the city. But I think that corridor, um, which includes Strawberry Square, and and Harristown's done a great job with Strawberry Square. Um, and uh, and bringing in uh, a number of new restaurants and entities and you know everything you know what's happened at Strawberry Square the new the new Rite Aid uh, the new provisions this this is uh, um, this is ripe for development and and the the rents are not that expensive and uh, if there are people interested they should uh, they should consider being part of that but um, hopefully what will then happen is that businesses themselves will sort of band together and create uh, a sort of business working group which will um, work in, um, in sort of joint promotions, similar to what's happened in Midtown around the market with, um, uh, with events like Third in the Berg or um, other, uh, other, other activities that were basically created um, by merchants to create that sense of community. So I think Harrisburg, and those are the historic corridors, we're just, they're just coming back. And I did have this conversation the other day with someone who uh, said, as, as you've said, you know, boy, I wish there was more retail. And I say, uh, there's a tremendous amount of retail that has um, occurred and a tremendous amount of change that has occurred in, in just the last decade. And, um, and so uh, if you look at, uh, <coughs> you know, if you look at uh, where the market was uh, or, or what things were like before Millworks or what happened before um, HMAC or, you know, I, could, I can go on. There, uh, this is, uh, or, or even before Hack Midtown, uh, or the Campus Square building, which is bustling and has many merchants, and all of that has happened within the last decade. So we can't forget that. It's, uh, it's, it's continues to sort of build and grow on itself, and it will, it will um, spread to other corridors and other networks. We're hoping to see more of that, for instance, in Mulder Square with our investment in, again, uh, new trees, new, uh, you know, better lighting, better sidewalks, a green alley. Partners coming in with new construction that is uh, mixed use, so it includes a, a commercial component. Uh, you know that will that will hopefully inspire and feed others to become part of it. Yeah. Yeah. So um, we, the school district is uh, is a member of our uh, you know uh, Vision Zero task force. They we we've, we've spoken to them specifically about the State Street rapid response in part because the administration building is there. There's also a charter school right in the midst of it. It's a it's a school zone in the midst of what we're trying to do. Um, they've been particularly cooperative and in, in areas such as I mentioned before with uh, the area around uh, Scott and Melrose and, and uh, that intersection there where they're, they're willing to um, incorporate, you know, allow their property to be part of a, a major redesign. Um, and, uh, and, and just generally, uh, safety around schools is a, is a major issue for them. It's come up uh, repeatedly with the issue of crossing guards and um, safe neighborhoods. So we, we see this in, uh, as a uh, sort of a unified city approach to, um, to making it not only safer for um, you know, pedestrians and residents, but very specifically safer for kids to get to school. Yeah. <coughs> Okay.